So this series is all about living sin. Living as God sent people. Last week we talked in Matthew chapter 10, verse 8. It says this, that, that Jesus was telling his disciples, telling his followers, that go, heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse those who have leprosy, drive out demons, because freely you have received this power, freely you have received this hope, freely you have received this good news. So give it away. Amen. Give it away. And so that's our charge to us as a body as a group, that we are to live sent, that we are to live as God sent people, empowered with this message. How many have been changed by the message of Jesus? Oh, right? But without a doubt, we can say, I know that moment when Jesus came in, he stepped in, and things in my life have started turning around. As I continued walking and putting my faith in him, my life has been changed. I've been, everything has been looking better, and there's still some other things that aren't looking great, but he, as I lean on him, he's changing those things too, right? We know those things. We have this hope and Jesus says, you have this, you've experienced this, now go, now give it away, give it away. And so this week, um, we're going to continue this series, and throughout the month, we're going to be focusing on being a sent people. Jesus didn't just come and to give us freedom and deliverance for us to keep it for ourselves. He said, give it away, and give it away. And over and over again, we see that repeated throughout the Gospel and throughout the New Testament, that we that have received such great news, such amazing powers, such transformational power, now is our turn to give it away. And so that's our responsibility. Today we're going to be talking about how do we use our mouth? How do we speak the gospel? How do we speak this good news? And I'm hoping, and I've got a few people already, my favorite, and taking some notes. I want to challenge you, if you didn't get a bulletin, get a piece of paper, get your iPhone out. Today will be a day. This series, we're going to be focusing on not just some great uh, points and some, some good things we could all say amen to, but we're going to look at also practical things. How can we be trained? How can we get, gain confidence in sharing the gospel, sharing the truth about Jesus? Because we don't want this just to be a Sunday morning thing. Though we love it when you bring guests on Sunday morning, you bring your friends to the barbecue, you're bringing these people that don't know Jesus, say, hey, I want to get them around people that know how to talk about Jesus. I like that. But, I, but it's also, Jesus said, it's you that have freely received, so now you get to freely give it away. So it's the next week we're going to work on equipping. So let's turn to Romans chapter 10. Like I said, my favorite book is Romans. I think I can preach there every week. It has so much good, good stuff in it. But we're looking at Romans chapter 10 this morning. And we're going we're gonna to get this. We're going to uh, get this understanding that it, that it is our opportunity to speak the truth. Because if we don't speak the truth, if we don't speak about this good news, if we don't speak about Jesus, then there's people around us that are dying. They're without hope. They're without freedom. And the only way that they're going to gain freedom, the only way that they're going to gain this good news is if we start speaking if we start talking about it. So Romans chapter 10 is really great. Let's look at this, starting in verse 12. It says this, For there is no difference between Jew and Gentile. I love this. With our church's heart. There's no difference between, uh, no matter what your background is, there's no difference between Jew and Gentile. The same Lord is Lord of all. Amen? Amen. And richly blesses all who call on Him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Amen. So we can rejoice in that. Anybody, no matter what their background is, no matter what their situation is, no matter what's gone on in their life beforehand, if they call on Jesus, there's restoration, there's hope, there's freedom, right? Anybody who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Verse 14. How then can they call the one that they have not believed in? Again, all these people, they don't believe in Jesus. And how can they believe in the one whom they have not heard? The Bible teaches that faith comes from hearing. And how can they hear without somebody proclaiming to them? Or some versions say, preaching to them. They said, okay, that's why I invite my friends to church on Sunday. No, it's you. You're the one proclaiming. You're the one preaching. And how can anyone preach unless they are sent? As is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. But not all the Israelites accepted the good news. For Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed our message? 17 says this. Consequently, right here, faith comes from hearing the message. Faith, belief in Jesus, comes from hearing about Jesus. And the message is heard through the word about Christ. Yeah. 
So you're going to decide that there's things God is doing in your life. There's things that Jesus has done for you. There's transformation that's happening because you put your faith in Jesus. Well, guess what? It's that word. It's the word. Or some people will say it's the testimony. It's the things that God's doing in your life that then it activates faith in those who are around you. You say, man, I wish my, my loved one would come to know Jesus. I wish my neighbor down the street would come to know Jesus. Hey, there's a co-worker. I know they're going through some rough stuff because they don't know Jesus. And I know Jesus is help for them. Guess what? It's the word about what God has done in your life that is going to produce faith in them. That's going to produce belief in their heart. That's what, James, uh, that's, what, sorry, that's what Paul is talking to us right here in Romans. It says that everyone who calls the name of the Lord, they will have the same salvation experience, the same a restoration experience that you have. But how are they going to believe if they don't hear about it? You say, all right, I'm going to bring them all to church. Bring them all to church. Yeah. But guess what? God also wants to use you yeah. to share your story right. of what God's done in your life with those who are around you. Yeah. Yes. So the first part, point this morning is this. Say something. <laughs> Say something. Yeah. You know, uh, we were talking on Wednesday night a little bit about this. We said, you know, how do we how do we share the gospel? How do I share this hope with with those who are around me that need it? And, and we're talking. And you know, at first I wanted to say all these steps. You know, I can I can list you all these steps, all these things. And you know what I just said? I said point one: say something, <laughs> anything. <laughs> Jesus is good. I don't know. I'm at the workplace. Say something. I said last week, you know, sometimes we, we risk what we're going to lose. We're, we're in fear of what we're going to lose if we say something. You know what? It's worth it. There's people yeah, giving up their is. lives for the sake of the gospel. Yeah. We're not at risk losing our we're not at least the risk losing our lives this morning. We may lose some friends. We may lose our job. But guess what? We know that there's a God in heaven who provided us salvation. I think He can provide, provide for us some new friends. I think He can provide for us a new place of employment. You know, if we're going to take this thing as serious and say we are a sent people, we are ones that are sent to proclaim how good, how awesome, how great Jesus is. Yes. Luke chapter 12, verse 11. Give us some confidence. What am I going to say? I don't know what I'm going to say. I, I don't know how to answer them. I don't, I don't know all the scripture yet. I, I don't know if I can be a part of this. You know what? It's okay. Because Jesus has some really important words for you. That's, if that's your heart this morning, you say, I don't know about this. Man, this whole being sent thing, this whole talking to other people about Jesus, it makes me a little nervous. Jesus knew it was going to make you nervous. That's right. God knew it was going to be something that would maybe create a little fear, maybe a little discomfort in your life. And you know what? That's why the Holy Spirit was sent. Let's see what Jesus says about this in Luke chapter 12, verse 11. Jesus, he, he was aware that, hey, that you might get a little nervous. I mean, when Jesus, uh, let's put a little background behind this. When Jesus said this verse to him, or the verse we're about to read, he was talking to people that were about to go before uh, men and, and councils that were able to take their life. That they could literally die for the belief that they had in Jesus. They could lose, they could lose, their, they could lose all their position. They could lose their livelihood. They could, they could lose their very life. Jesus knew this. They were entering into this kind of position. People hated them for the message that they were going to share. So Luke chapter 12, Jesus says some encouraging words. He says, say something. Just open your mouth and say something. Let's look. Luke chapter 12, we're looking at verse 11. He says this to the, to the disciples he's sending out. He says, when you are brought before synagogues, rulers, and authorities... These are important people. Do not worry about how you will defend yourselves or what you will say. I said, all right, I can take a little comfort in that. All right, don't worry. But, you know, sometimes that's like, that's like you're going through a hard time and somebody tells you, just don't worry, right? And someone says, you just don't worry, then it's like, well, that don't help me much, but I'm still worried. <laughs> I'm still standing before an authority. They can take my life, Jesus. And Jesus just said, don't worry. And I said, they still have this authority. <laughs> the situation ain't changed, right? So he says this, don't worry. Why? He gives, oh, Jesus, Jesus is a masterful. He's awesome at, at giving us a, giving a reason why we don't have to worry. Giving us a, a reason why we can have hope. He's all, 
chock yes. full of reasons why. Yes. So here's what Jesus said. Don't worry what you will say. Verse 12. For the Holy Spirit will teach you what to say. Hallelujah. And this is hard for me because sometimes I like, I told you guys, I like to plan, right? Oh, Everybody else like to have a, I like to have a plan. I have to, I have to, hey, I want to make an appointment with you for coffee next week at 10 o'clock. And from now until that time, I want to plan out what we're going to talk about, how we're going to present it, and how it's going to go, right? Everybody like that? And I thought, nod, right? <laughs> but he says this, the Holy Spirit will teach you at that time what you should say. So I'm with my coworkers, and they're talking about the problems of their life, and I know Jesus is the answer, and I really don't know what to say, but I'm just going to start saying something about Jesus, and at that moment, as I start talking about Jesus, all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit takes over, and it's not my words anymore, it's Holy Spirit-empowered words for that moment, for that person, start saying something. Just start talking. I said, I don't know what to say. You know what? If you know something that Jesus has done for your life, start there. Yes. And I know Jesus did this for me, and he can do it for you. I'm going to start with that. I'm going to start talking about what Jesus has done in my life. And so in a moment here, we're going to start talking about how do we, how do we share that? How do we share what Jesus has done in us? Because when we start there, I think we can continue in walking in, hey, let's just start saying stuff. And as we start saying stuff, Jesus' stuff is going to come out. The Holy Spirit is going to meet us at that point of faith. That's, right. That's what the disciples had. They were going to stand before authorities that could take their life, and they had to believe without a shadow of doubt, I'm going to start saying something, and the Holy Spirit is going to say a word through me that's going to pierce their hearts. Right. Yeah. And you know what? Some of them still lost their life. Yeah. Some of them still paid a price. But they said it was worth it. Why? Because Jesus was working. Jesus went to the cross on my behalf because he stood before the world at shame, naked, beaten for my sake. Man, I can stand before the authorities. I can stand in my workplace. I can stand before my neighbors and before my loved ones. And I can tell them of how great Jesus is. Because they did it for me. When you stand before authorities, when you stand before your friends, just say something. Luke chapter 12, verse 11. Secondly, we've got to know, first thing we've got to say something. Secondly, we've got to know that Jesus is the hope for the world. We have to have confidence that Jesus is the hope for the world. Jesus is the answer to every problem. Every financial, every broken relationship, every hardship in our life. Every, Jesus is the hope for the world. Colossians chapter 1. Small little book, sometimes I might flip over it. Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians. Colossians chapter 1, verse 24 through 27. Jesus is the hope. And when we truly believe this, one, it will transform our relationship with God. Why? Because it will, instead of us going to all these other things to help, to find help, all these other things to help find peace, all these other things to help get, our, get ourselves out of the situation, uh, we will go and we will run to Jesus. And when we have that heart, that we know Jesus is the only hope, then when we hear from brokenness of those who are around us, we know, hey, the only hope, the only help, the only thing they need is Jesus. And when we're convinced that, when we believe that, man, transformation starts happening. Speaking about Jesus, it becomes easy because I know, hey, the only hope, the only hope for you is Jesus. That's the only advice I'm going to give you. I'm not going to give you the great advice I've gotten on the internet, which is sometimes is good, too. <laughs> great advice my mama told me when I was a little kid, which was good, too. But the only hope, the only, the best advice, the greatest thing we can offer is that Jesus is the one that can get you out of any situation you find yourself in. It's Jesus. Colossians chapter 1, starting in verse 24. It says this, now I rejoice in what I have suffering for you. Man, Paul is a suffering, a suffering saint, right? Shipwreck, beating, I'm in prison. Now I rejoice in this. I rejoice when I lose friends. I rejoice when I get fired because I'm talking about Jesus too. I rejoice in it. What I'm suffering for you. And I fill up in my flesh what is still lacking in regard to Christ's affliction. For the sake of his body, which is the church. Christ died for us. I have become his servant 
by the commission of God gave me to present to you the word of God in its fullness. Man, I'm suffering, but I am going after this. I've been commissioned. We as a church, we as a people of God, we've been sent. We've been commissioned with the word of God in its fullness. The mystery that has been kept hidden for the ages and generations, but is now disclosed to the Lord's people. This mystery he's talking about is Jesus and salvation through Jesus. Where it used to be hidden, like Pastor said, go the one priest into the temple and make the sacrifice. Now the mystery is that Jesus has come and he's set it all in order. He's been once and for all. So this mystery now is disclosed, disclosed to God's people. To them, God has chosen to make known among the Gentiles the glorious riches of this mystery. So Paul's saying, now I have the opportunity to share with everybody, all nations, all people, all backgrounds, I can declare to them this mystery about Jesus. Which is, what is this mystery? Which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Amen. Christ in us is the hope of glory. Last week we talked about glory is the character of God. It's the, it's the, it's the bright things of God. It's, his, it's all of His mercy, all of His grace, all of His glory, all of His peace. It's all of who He is. That's the glory of God. So now the hope of the glory, the hope of that, the hope of heaven is in us. Is Christ in us. Amen. So how do we share this? How do we do how do we get it where it's what I know, it's the hope, it's been changing me, it's great, it's awesome. How do I share this? I want to start talking about a, a, a tool, a, a way that we can share our story. God's story in us. I believe every person in the room that has received Christ, you have a God story, you have a, a god side story in your life. And our, our prayer is that we would be able to be a people that are sent on mission to help other people find their place in God's story. How God wants to break in into their life. And so let's start first this morning by saying, how do I share my God story? How do I share what God has done in my life? And so this story, I believe, has a four-part, four-part, four-scene story. It would like ever like movies or books that like you, you, you like telling the story, you see in all these different parts, right? You get to the climax, you get all oh, the resolution, and, and it has this whole flow to the story. Well, our lives in Christ have a same four-part story. And I, I'm gonna use these four words. I'm gonna call it the creation, the fall, our redemption, and our restoration. Creation, fall, redemption. And restoration. It's a four-part story. God has created this thing, given us an image, and given us an identity. There's a thing that we find our identity in. There's a fall. There's a way that we have chosen rebellion over the ways of God, and it caused and has caused destruction in our life and in the life of those around us. There's the redemption that is found in Jesus, where He exchanged what we were going through for His glory. He took our position, and now in Christ, there's a restoration. There's a new hope. There's a hope that we have and that we found in Christ. You guys ready to learn this? You guys ready to receive this? I, I saw. I got a few notes. You got a few things. Writing these down. So let's start with creation. How do we tell our story? And it starts with creation. And this point is is about our identity. Where we find our identity. Before Christ, some of us found our identity in who we were and what we could do in the in the sins that we have and the possession we had. Right. So creation. We got to answer the question for ourselves: Who or what most shaped? who we thought we were, or how or where did we receive our identity? So that answers the question, who or what most shaped, or who shaped who we thought we were? So we know in the, the Bible story that, that the Adam and Eve were created with an identity. They were created in the image of God. So that was, that was who they were, that's how they found their identity. But we know, and sometimes in our way we're in our, in our walks, man, we can we can find our identity in many different things. Some of us find it in the accomplishments that we, we've had. Some of us uh, find it in our, our family and, and the love that we receive from our family. I know in my life there was a time where I found my identity in the approval of others. 
I, I, I held so highly what other people thought about me that it, it, it kept me bound. It, it, was like, it, was, it was like, man, if somebody's going to like me, if I, if I go into this circle of friends or if I go into this room, I know I've got to adapt to this situation because they may not like this about me. And, and I was always trying to hide who, I, who Andrew really was, who, what my heart really wanted to say, what I really believed because I, uh, my identity was all wrapped in what other people thought about me. But guess what? That led, to, that led to a brokenness in my life. And so the second thing is our fault. Whenever we find our identity in something outside of who God is and what He's done for our life, it will always lead to a fault. It will always lead to a destruction in our life. So let's follow this story pattern uh, along to the fault. So what is, a, what is the question? How do, we, how do we start communicating how this identity crisis in our lives created some destruction. So we want to ask these questions to ourselves. Why was your relationship with God and others not, or why or how was your relationship with God and others not the way it was supposed to be? The way God created it to be. Now think about this, the story of God is that He created Adam and Eve in His image, they were like Him, and after, after that, after the, after the fall, or the fall, they, they created them to have perfect fellowship with them, right? Jesus, the God, and Adam and Eve, they were walking with Him. And that was how it was supposed to be. It was supposed to be that we would live eternally, walking with God in the garden, walking in His presence, being with Him forever. That was how it was intended to be. However, because they, they found their identity in something else, and what they could eat, and what they could do, there was a fall. It was all of a sudden there was separation from it. So we've got to ask ourselves in our, as we're thinking about how can we tell our story to, to somebody? How can we tell our God story? First, we've got to find, hey, where is our identity? What, what in our creation do we have wrong? And secondly, how did that, what did that cause? What was the cause? What was the effect of that on our lives? So for me, I said my creation, I, I, my identity was wrapped up in what other people thought about me. So and when I got to my fall, the, the hardship in my life was, hey, I didn't want anybody else to know who I really was. So I found myself in a hidden sin. There was sin in my life that I, I wouldn't allow people to know who I really was. Because if I told them what was really going on inside of my life, all of a sudden, man, I felt there was all this fear in my life that, man, they're going to not like me. They're going to, I was going to be punishment in my life. I, I was in total fear of what was going on. I couldn't share what was really who I was. And so, what, what fault was that? Man, I, I couldn't have close friends. I, I couldn't let people to get too close to me. I was always pushing. There was a, there was a boundary of how far people could get close to me. I, I wasn't able to connect with people on, on a real level. Man, me and my, my wife at the time, man, there was, there was a struggle between us because, man, I, I couldn't allow Rachel to know that I was, that I was weak, that there was something actually going on inside of me that, that she couldn't know about. There was a fault. There was a separation between me and others. But not only between me and others, between me and God. So now when I approach God, I, I, man, I, I couldn't come before Him because I, I felt guilty or I, I felt shameful. I couldn't actually confess to Him the things that, that I desired to. The, second, the third part of this, our story, where do we find our identity, our creation? Where, where have we fallen? Where is there brokenness in my life? But the redemption... How has Jesus taken the penalty of your rebellion? And how has Jesus redeemed and restored your life back to how God intended it to be? So when you know, hey, where we found our identity, man, what, what problem it caused in my life? Man, I was hidden. I'm... Now, redemption. How has Jesus taken the penalty of our rebellion? How has Jesus redeemed and restored back to how God intended it to be? So I begin to realize in the gospel that, that Jesus, man, he saw me and he knew me in my brokenness. He knew Andrew for who I really was. And I begin to see in the gospel that even though he knew me in my sin, he knew me in my brokenness, he knew how much I was waiting for others' approval. He knew what he said, Andrew, I don't care who you are. I don't care what you've done. I loved you even while you were still yes. all messed up. Amen. 
I went all the way to the cross and I restored for, for you, Andrew, and your mess. I came to you, wrapped you in my arm. I died for you. I restored you. No, Andrew, you don't have to hide anymore. No, I, I actually, I covered all that, all that, okay, I, and you can actually just be who you are. You can tell people who you are. And for me, in this moment, it created such a freedom that I was actually able to go and confess things to those who were actually able to help me. Yeah. And I was able to see freedom in my life. I was able to go and, and talk to a pastor and say, hey, Patrick, this is actually what's going on in my life. This is, hey, brother, one of my friends that was a, a believer, hey, this is actually what's going on. Will you pray? Will you walk with me? And now I saw Jesus, the one who came and loved and accepted me, he began to transform my inner being, and now I realized that I didn't have to fear men. I could go into a group of people, no matter what I what they thought about me, or what they could what I thought they could do to me, and I could just be who I really was. I could tell them all of my fault. And there was no more shame in my life. There was no more guilt because Jesus now accepted me and I understood that and I believed that. And now he redeemed my life. leads to the last part of the story, restoration. What has changed, or what is changing, about our lives now? So at first, man, I, I believe, man, other people could just harm me, other people's opinions of me, it, it, it made me feel uncomfortable, it made me feel guilty, man, I was always worried about it, 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 it caused me to, to guard everybody, man, all of a sudden then I begin to believe that Jesus was the one that accepts me no matter what I've done. No matter who I am, he sees me for who I am and still says, Andrew, I love you. Andrew, I'm still going to the cross, no matter what I've done. And what did that, how did that cause change in my life? What was the restoration that God brought into my life? Now I have this freedom. I can be who I am. I can be the lover of Jesus. I can tell people my problem. It doesn't bother me because I know my security is now in Christ. I've been accepted. I've been loved. I've been now a child of God. And it changed my heart to now I, I have such freedom. I can just shout a little bit even though my voice is a little up. I mean, I can I get excited. It doesn't matter what's going on around me. It doesn't matter what people's opinions are because I know I have the approval of the one whose opinion matters the most. Amen. It's in Jesus. It's a good story. So how do we as a people begin to work through that progress? I want to encourage you up at the Facebook page. If you haven't liked us on Facebook yet, I encourage you to like us on Facebook because I'm, we're sending out resources and scriptures and things like that on, on Facebook. So this afternoon at 2.30, there's a resource that's going to be posted. It's going to be about this story. It's going to help us walk through this and, and help us articulate our story. Because if we are, are able to articulate what God has done in us, Making, this is the important part, making Jesus the hero. Yeah. Right, right. It wasn't that I just got my big boy pants on and I stopped caring about what other people <laughs> thought about me and I just started saying it being who I was. That wasn't it. There was a gospel truth that penetrated my heart. There was a gospel truth about who Jesus is and what he's done for me that penetrated my heart. And when I started believing that truth, all of a sudden, transformation came. So if we're going to be ones that it says that we're going to speak about Jesus, Romans chapter 10 says, right? That, that how can they hear, and how can they believe unless they hear? Consequently, faith comes by hearing the message. The message they've heard about the Word of God, the Word of Christ in you. So now we're equipped with a story. I'm equipped with a story of who God is and what He's done in my life. And now when I speak about him, when I know all of a sudden I have friends and, and they're worried about their acceptance and, and what people think about them, then I can tell them the gospel truth that transformed my life. Because we're about to go into the story. How do we use this now also to help speak truth specifically to people's situations? One, this helps us be able to communicate the gospel of what God's done in our lives. And God's transformed my life. There's a truth about Jesus. I received it. I believed it. All of a sudden, there's transformation. Tell that story. It's a good story. What God has done in your life. Get honest with yourself. And what was I putting my identity in before Christ? And how how did that cause destruction in my life? 
Man, I was out sleeping around with this person and that person. Man, I was out drinking and doing this thing. I, I mean, in college, I lost my job. I lost my friends. I lost my family. All these things. All of a sudden, then Jesus stepped in. Jesus stepped in and taught me he's a, he's a better lover than any man could ever be or any woman could ever be. And, and all of a sudden, Jesus stepped in and he taught me that, that he was a father to the fatherless and that he, he could love my family better than I could. And all of a sudden, I just started depending on him and a greater restoration into my family. All of a sudden, I realized that there's a greater peace that I could, that, that can come into my heart than any alcohol or any one-night stand or any binge drinking situation could, could bring me. Because guess what? In every one of those situations, the problem still comes back. But in Jesus, all of a sudden... I started depending on Jesus, and the problem stopped coming back. Things started changing. Man, he started taking care of things in my life. And all of a sudden, man, when I depended on him, my life changed. Start knowing that story. Start rehearsing that story. Because, man, there's going to be opportunities. There's going to be people God brings into your life that are going to have the exact same story as you. Man, I know about this Jesus. This is what it this is what he did in my life. He can do it in your life. So how do we start? How do we start sharing? How do we start using this story, this framework, to hear where other people need the gospel? So step one is how do I just share my story? I need to share my. I need to share what Jesus has done in my life, man. What he brought me out of. Secondly, we can use this to hear where other people need Jesus. The first question we need to ask is the kind of same questions we ask ourselves to tell the story. But this, this is questions that, that we can have in our heart as we're listening to other people's story. You know, you, you got the, you're, you're, you're with a coworker, all of a sudden they tell you all their issues in their lives, right? All of a sudden the neighbor, they tell me all their issues, you meet a new person, boom, all of a sudden all these things came up, right? This is the questions we need to ask. What is most shaping their life, creation, the start? As your friend is talking to you, man, ask the question. If you ask them the question, they're right. But what's most shaping their lives? Sometimes it's really evident. Sometimes the Holy Spirit will tell you, and this this situation is most shaping their lives. Fall. What is broken in their life? As you're listening to your friend, and then they're, they're talking about all these crazy things that are happening in their life, in the situations of their life. And, and, man, what is what is the brokenness that they're communicating? What struggle are they having? Where is, where is things, even as they talk, you can notice, where are things that aren't like they they want them to be? They have a hope. They, they, they want something to be some way, and they're telling you, it's not that way, it's broken, it's, it's messed up. Third, how or what, or who or what are they looking to make things right? As believers, we know that we've looked to Jesus to make things right. And Jesus has brought freedom into your life. He's, he's made things right. He's begun to restore things. But those who don't yet believe in Jesus, they're also looking for a Redeemer. Yes. Mm-hmm. Things are off in their life. Things are misplaced. Things are a little not right. And so they're searching for things. Yes. Some of our men, they got the next blog they're looking forward to, to help them out. They're, I mean, they're going to the next seminar, trying to get things right in their life. They, they're looking for a friend. They're looking for uh, maybe even somebody that's given bad. I mean, they're looking for advice. They're looking for something to fix the thing that they're in. Look at just substances. We talk about love, right? Somebody, creation, they, they, they have this situation where they... They desire to be loved. Man, they, so what's happening in their life? Man, they're going to all the wrong places to find love. The, re, the redemption that they're looking for, they're trying to find somebody who's going to accept them, who's going to love them. And what is their hope? Restoration, you can say, you can put on that, uh, put in parentheses, restoration, what is their hope? The hope is when I, hey, when I go to this club, when I go to this person, when I drink this thing, when I, when I take this shortcut, I'm hoping that it's going to bring this yes. kind of restoration. That's right. That's right. I'm hoping that it's going to actually finally give me the love that I've been searching for. But they find out until they turn to Jesus, they're never going to get that hope. That's right. They're never going to get that restoration. They're going to keep on searching. They're going to keep on searching. They're going to keep on searching. Romans 1 says they're going to see, keep on searching. And then that thing that they search after, it's going to not satisfy them. So they're going to pervert that That's thing right. and find, try to find even more perversion. They're trying to get that satisfaction. Yeah. And so as a 
somebody who's full of the Holy Spirit, we're listening to their story. We're saying, man, I, I see in them this situation, that they're, and they're, they see this brokenness. I see that they're searching, and they're, and they're going after this love in the, in the wrong place. I see they're hoping to finally be accepted, and, and they, they're not finding the acceptance. And then I say, you know what? You need Jesus. Oh, stop talking to me about Jesus. You always, you always tell about Jesus. No. Let me tell you. Man, Jesus loves you. Yeah. There's, you know what? There's nothing you can do. I know, I know all those men, all those women, you're going after them and, and they want you to be a certain way. They're trying to come in. They're trying to control you and switch you because they're hungry for love too. And, and it's not working out, huh? Yeah, it was my fifth one. I still haven't found the right situation. Let me tell you, if you turn to Jesus, He's going to be one that's going to restore you. He accepts you for who you are. He loves you with an unconditional love. He went all the way to the cross. He died for you. You know any man that's going to die? You know any woman that's going to die? Oh. And we share Jesus with them. And it doesn't, not every time they're going to say, oh yes, I need him, let me see and you know what? There's a moment and the Holy Spirit speaks to their heart through the words that you're saying. Yes. And when He convicts their heart and He transforms them, and all of a sudden a seed is planted and faith is produced, like Romans says, because they heard. They heard how good Jesus was. Yeah. They heard how good He could be. Yeah. I want that. I need that. I, yeah. Everything else has failed. I've got to get it. Yes. yes. <laughs> We're people that are sent people. We've got to learn how to tell God's story in our lives. And we've got to learn how to hear God's story in other people's lives. That's right. When I was in different opportunities to hear stories in people's lives, I, I know I've told this story before, but my friend Dev, he was somebody, and his identity was in what he did. His identity was in his name. And the problem was that he was from a background in India where his name meant that he was the lowest caste in all of, in all of the area. And so because of that, he has faced uh, persecution. He, he has faced uh, all sorts of racist, the racial remarks and, and different things in, in the society that were against him just because of the name that he had. For him, that was a fall. That was a, that was a brokenness. He's like, man, I can't do anything. I, I tell people what my name is. They know what cast I'm. I can't even tell people my name because then all of a sudden racism starts and, 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 they, and they push me away and they treat me differently and all, just because my name is a problem. So he started. He started looking for a redeemer. He started getting really good at school. Really good. So good at school that he he received a scholarship that only. Uh, one percent of the community, his specific community, was able to receive. He got this scholarship. Then he went off to college, and, and he graduated top of his class. Then he, then he said, you know what, that wasn't, that wasn't enough. People still, if I'm in India, they still know my name. So you know what, I want to go to a school in America, because you know what, in America, I can tell people my name, and they don't care who I am. So I go to America, and when I'm in America, I want to succeed. So he went to Purdue University, and he got a degree in uh, aeronautical engineering. And in two years, he finished his four-year master's degree. And by the end of the other two years, he received a PhD in aeronautical engineer. He's like, I've got to accomplish more because if people aren't going to accept me for who I am, I've got to, I've got to go and I've got to get another degree and I've got to get another accomplishment. And I just talked to him after his graduation for his PhD, Dr. Deb, right? Really amazing. He said, Andrew, now what? Yeah. I don't know what else. To, now I've got to go get a job. Okay, now I'm going to go get a job. He said, crazy paying job out in Arizona going around and working with micro uh, micro lasers and, and he's he's working hard is it I talked to him just recently at a wedding I said hey hey Dave, how, and man it's just a just keep on going now. there's nothing to like there's not there's no need and now I'm just making money I gotta send it back to my family and they're, they're, everybody's asking me that how what I'm going to send more money to the family because the family's all dependent I'm searching, Andrew. In my heart, I'm here. I'm searching, Andrew. I'm searching for, and nothing's working. Nothing's bringing me hope. Nothing's giving me peace. Nothing's allowing me to be accepted. You know, 
I get to tell him as I, after I know his story and I've been talking to him for a while? Jeff, you know, the only hope for your acceptance you're searching for is Jesus. Amen. Mm -hmm. Jeff, man, if you came to Jesus, Jesus is going to love you yes. for who you are. You're going to have such a security in who you are. And God's unconditional love is going to flood your heart. And you're going to belong, Dev. You're going to be a child of God. Nobody can take that away from you. Start knowing his story. And we're able to share it. We can, be, we can live sent lives as we speak our story to others. And we are able to hear their story through the gospel lens. Be able to share Jesus. Do you understand what this I mean this morning? I want to read it again Romans chapter 10. Jesus said, Go. 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 Freely you have received. Freely we have received the gospel. Freely give it away. Freely give this great news away. Because it transforms lives. For there is no difference between Jew and Gentile. The same Lord is Lord over all, and richly blesses all who call on Him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Amen? Amen. He will bring transformation. He will save. This morning as we close, I, I want the, the first question is, where in your life have you been looking to another Redeemer to bring you hope? Examine ourselves. And take a moment. Holy Spirit, reveal to us where in our life have we been looking to another Redeemer to bring hope? felt this strong when I was preparing for this morning message. There's people in this room who are looking to something else to give you what Jesus desires to give you. And this morning is an opportunity for us to turn to God and say, Jesus, I want you. I receive it from you. Jesus, you're better. You're better than this. I'm trying to do it on my own. I'm trying to receive from a man or a woman what only, Jesus, you can give me. True love. Unconditional true love. I've been going to substance. I've been, I've been abusing things in my life. I've been hooked on pornography. I've, I've been doing drugs. I've been, I've been going out. I've been going to these things because I'm trying to re receive from them some hope. I'm trying to receive from them some peace. And this morning, Jesus would say, come to me. Come to me. Come to me. Lord, I want to give us an opportunity to come to Jesus and to receive from Him everything He wants to give to us. Oh, bless us. Scripture says that. Scripture says it, man. It's true. The same Lord is Lord of all. And richly blesses all those who call on him. And you need, you need a little heaven in your life. That's what it's, when I say it's blessing, that's what he's talking about. You need a little heaven in your life. Going through a little hell, things are a little broken right now, things aren't right. Things are a little off. You need a little blessing. You need a little heaven in your life. Call on him. Yes. Call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. It'll be made right. I want to pray, and if as as I pray, I don't even have to get to the end of the prayer. We're going to take a moment to respond to the message this morning. I know it's all about being sent people. But Jesus wants to do something in some people's life today. He wants to bring some restoration. 
if it's a broken relationship, if it's a broken marriage, if it's a broken thing, then it, Jesus, call on him. Call on him. Call on him. And I want to begin to pray. And as I pray, if that's you this morning, you say, yeah, I need to call on Jesus. I need Jesus to come and bring some redemption. I need Jesus to come bring some, I need Jesus to bring some Holy Spirit. In, I need Jesus in my life. And you know it. They right now, your heart's pounding. You know it. You know you need Jesus. And, and as I begin to pray, respond. I don't have to finish a prayer for you to get up to the altar. This is a place that says, yeah, this is a place of calling upon God. That's what it is, right? I want to begin to pray. You don't have to wait until the end of the prayer to respond, to come forward. I want to encourage you just to respond to Him. Come forward. Begin to call on Jesus. Jesus, right now, in this place, we come before you. We thank you for your spirit that reveals to us the truth of who you are. God, we thank you that there's those of us in this room that have a great testimony of what you've done. Jesus, you have taken our brokenness, you have taken our fallen uh, nature, and you have restored it, you have made it new, you have brought blessings, you have brought heaven into our life. But Father Lord, there, there's some in our, in, in our midst today, God, that are broken, that needs you, that things are falling apart, and you know what? It's time for us to call on you, Jesus. It's time for us to call on the name that is above every name, the name that brings salvation to all those who call on him. So, Father, right now, in this moment, I pray, God, that you would begin to do a work in our life that is undeniably you, that brings restoration, that brings hope, that brings heaven into earth right now. Father, we need you. If that's you this morning, you say, yeah, I need Jesus in my life. I need some restoration. There's some things that are broken. I invite you to come. We're going to pray. We're going to call on the name of the Lord together. So come yes. on down. Come on down. Let's respond to the Lord this morning. Let's respond to the Lord. Don't hesitate. Don't wait. Come on, let's move. Let's move right now. Come on down.